Greetings, my name is Kevin Reddick and I welcome you to my channel, Conversations from the Hot Box. Uh, many of the individuals connected with us are passionate about discussing real life issues and I do so from a Christian biblical perspective. I believe that by sharing our experiences and insights, we can learn from one another and grow in our faith and understanding of God's word. Today's conversation addresses the question, who is shaping your relationship and religion? So jump in the car and let's ride. Exodus 32 verses one through seven states, now when the people saw that Moses delayed coming down from the mountain, the people gathered together to Aaron and said to him, come make us gods that shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. And Aaron said to them, break off the golden earrings which are in your ears from your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people broke off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. And he received the gold from their hand and he fashioned it with an engraving tool and made a molding calf. Then they said, this is your God, O Israel, that brought you out of the land of Egypt. So when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made a proclamation and said, tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. Then they rose early on the next day, offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings and the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. And the Lord said to Moses, go get down for your people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. <clears throat> now, it doesn't take long for the Israelites to lose faith during Moses' 40 day absence from them. The people think not of God, but of Moses as their deliverer and their need for a visual symbol of the divine presence prompted them to ask Aaron to make gods for them. Either fearing the crowd or having himself lost faith, Aaron complies by fashioning a young bull from the Israelites golden jewelry and identifying it as the God who brought them out of Egypt exactly what God prohibited in the Ten Commandments. <laughs> the bull calf represented Baal. The Baal was a storm god or god of fertility in the Canaanite religion. The forgetful Israelites celebrated by feasting and worshiping the idol with offerings. God sees how little timing has taken the Israelites to forsake him. He determines to annihilate the descendants of the patriarchs and make a great nation of Moses instead. Unselfishly, Moses ignores the offer and intercedes for the Israelites. Now I must say too that this was very smart of Moses to remind God of his promises to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, because with each of these individuals, God revealed himself in ways he had not yet done for the Israelites who had just come out of Egypt. In Genesis 12 and seven, uh, it tells us that, then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, to your descendants, I will give this land. And there he built an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. The text tells us that God appeared to Abel. To appear means to become visible to the natural eye or to the apprehension of the mind. The Israelites had seen forms of the angel of God in the pillar of fire and of the cloud, but not God. In Genesis 32, 29 and 30, it states that then Jacob asked, saying, tell me your name, I pray. And he said, why is it that you ask about my name? And he blessed him there. So Jacob called the name of the place Penel, for I have seen God face to face, for my life is preserved.
Here, God revealed himself to Jacob. To reveal is to make known something that was unknown before or concealed. Then God moves to another dimension of revelation of himself. He shifted from appearing to revealing and now to availing. You see, when God engrafted the Gentiles, you and I, into the bloodline, he availed himself to us. Hebrews 1 and 1 states, God who at various times and in various ways spoke in times past to the fathers by the prophets has in these last days spoken to us by his son. Jesus was the word of God personified. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory the glory of his only begotten son of the father. <laughs> the last thing that they want is to be different. Yet this is what exactly God wanted for them, to be different, to be a peculiar people and a holy nation. And note that this, this calf was shaped by human hands. It was constructed through human intelligence, will, desire, weaknesses, and so forth. This speaks to a major concern today, today that the people of God are more interested in things that are man-produced, designed, declared, and sourced instead of God. We want the tickling of our ear and the winking at sin that men provide. Since the altar was built for the celebration of a sacred feast, it may be concluded that the altar was for sacrificial use. As verse 6 states, But just as the worship of Yahweh had been corrupted by introducing an image to represent him, so it was also corrupted by the conduct of the Israelites in their worship. The coarse and the excessive Carousing was a typical freak feature of pagan worship during that time. The people were not proactive, they were reactive. You see, part of being proactive is to think about why we do something and, and, and why we do the things we do in order to change what we're doing. We are instructing in scripture to get understanding. What helps provide understanding is information and revelation. So let's get some un understanding by providing some information here. When Moses returned, he found the people celebrate. To celebrate means to praise, to commend, to make famous, to honor, and to distinguish, to, to, to be ceremonious and uh, uh, have remarks of joy and respect. Relig religious celebrations can be used as a gauge to measure the moral values and foundational principles of any religion and its followers. In addition, these celebrations can be used to shape a religion. Over 75% of the world's populations are members of seven major world religions. Hinduism, Judaism, Buddhism, Confucianism, uh, uh, Christianity and Islam. Now, although Christianity claims to have the highest spiritual and moral foundation, in addition to being the only means of eternal salvation, which is true, the history of Christianity with its countless fruits of a higher and purer life of truth and love is stained by its celebrations that are accepted and observed in the name of Jesus. And this tells us that a thinking world will question that. You see, in our religious ceremonies, for example, Easter and Christmas being the major ones, uh, we have lost the very reason for the celebration. Notwithstanding the celebration of an actual demonic celebration called Halloween, which we have put a religious spin on and dressing it up in clothes of ministry outreach. Well, what's wrong with outreaching to the community with truth? 
putting a beautiful dress on a demon doesn't make it any less a demon. And changing the name of a celebration doesn't change the nature and purpose of it spiritually. Scripture tells us that God has not given us a spirit of fear. Did you know that Halloween celebrates fear? The theme of darkness, graves, blood, skulls, vampires, witches, and wizards infuse fear, especially among children. It also serves to desensitize us to the reality and function of Satan's kingdom of darkness in the earth. Ephesians 5 and 11 states, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. 1 Thessalonians 5.22 tells us to abstain from all appearance of evil, evil. And I would add appearance includes association. 1 Corinthians 10.20 says, But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> a bunny rabbit, a fictitious character called Santa Claus. Pride, greed, personal agendas, and egos have all been put into the position that uh, should be held for Christ and the glory of God. I guess it's easier to try to make God into an image people want rather than conform ourselves to the image of Christ. Let's look at Christmas, you know. It is unknown really exactly when or why December 25th became associated with the birth of Christ. The New Testament does not give a specific date. Uh, a gentleman popularized the idea that Jesus was born on the 25th in his reference uh, uh, book for uh, Christians that was written in AD 221. This date is nine months after the traditional date of March 25th. The earliest reference to the celebration of Christmas, which was in Rome in uh, 354 AD. <clears throat> By the Middle Ages, the holiday had become prominent with another twist to it. <laughs> it was called misrule. Misrule refers to disorder or lawlessness, which includes drunkenness, promiscuity, gambling, and etc. In colonial America, the Puritans of, of the New England uh, uh, area disapproved of Christmas. Its celebration was outlawed in Boston from uh, 15, I mean 1659 to 1681. Christmas fell out of favor in the United States after the American Revolution when it was considered an English custom. Interest in America was its interest in America was revived in 1820 by several books and short stories. One of those books was entitled A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens, which was published in 1843. And it played a major role in reinventing Christmas as a holiday in which God and his son Jesus were still absent in these publications and the celebration itself. Throughout the 20th century, America experienced controversy over the nature of Christmas again, and its dual status as a religious feast day and a secular holiday. So in a federal court ruling on December 9th, 1999, Galilee versus the United States, the court declared that, and I quote, the establishment of Christmas day as a legal public holiday does not violate the establishment clause because it has a valid secular purpose. And that purpose is the boosting of the American economy, unquote. <clears throat> looking, back at, looking back at our scripture in Exodus 32, this was the making of a celebration 
that had the power to shape the religion of the Hebrews if God and Moses did not stop it. Let's look at what happened. First, they reasoned. They reasoned Moses is absent intelligently instead of discerningly. The shaping power of reasoning is a major tool of Satan. He works to maintain control over the airwaves, meaning the media. Why? Because it provides avenues of communicating and implanting his will in the people's minds. Second, there was weak leadership in Aaron. And then third, there was misplaced focus. They focused on Moses, the man, instead of Yahweh, the God. And fourth, they gathered themselves. <laughs> this statement in the text contains the ideal of assembling without regard to the purpose, without regard to the God who just brought them out of captivity. They began to shape a religion for the rest of the people. Those who gathered did not want the God of Moses. Part of the problem was because the people were afraid of God. Exodus 20, 18, 20 to 21 informs us. Now all the people witnessed the thunderings, the lightning flashes, the sound of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they humbled and stood afar off. They said to Moses, you speak with us and we will hear, but let not God speak with us lest we die. And Moses said to the people, do not fear for God has come to test you and that his and that his fear may be before you so that you may not sin. So the people still the fall, but Moses drew near the thick darkness where God was. What I'm sharing uh, does not know is it meant to try to make the Christian faith any less powerful, relevant, true or effective. It just means that we need to be more watchful, thoughtful, prayerful, and careful of our faith and of those who would attempt to distort it. The Christian life is only to be shaped by the Word of God, the Holy Spirit, and God Himself. The sequence of events at Sinai shows that the law was never viewed as a way of salvation. The law was given first to bring the Israelites awareness of sin. And immediately afterwards, a sacrificial system with a priesthood and worship center was established. The system permitted the approach of a simple human being to a holy God, providing access through sacrifice. Moses called what they did a great sin and his assessment was accurate. It was a great sin because of who committed it, the nation of Israel, the very chosen people of God, his special treasure. It was a great sin because of when and where they committed it, at Mount Sinai, after they had heard God's law declared and seen God's glory revealed. Aaron and Hur er, and er had authority from Moses to lead in his absence. And though they were men who had seen God's mighty acts, they failed God and Moses. Instead of uh, restraining the people, Aaron went along and, and, and allowed them to form and shape a religion of their own thinking. He gratified the desires of their sinful hearts. <laughs> Later, he offered a, a, a feeble excuse and tried to blame the people, but God knew better. <laughs> God was so angry that he would have killed Aaron had Moses not interceded for him. See, in several ways, Moses typified Christ, who went above telling the people to tarry. In his absence, some forgot his promised return and that he would make themselves uh, uh, gods denying his return. Jesus will come unexpectedly, punishing evildoers who are 
naked and gathering the truth to himself. Today, we as ambassadors of God's kingdom have been given authority by Jesus to lead and guard and guide the integrity of his gospel. This assignment comes with great responsibility and accountability. We are to be the guardrails so that what God has declared is not reshaped by the hands of our enemies. And we have to do so in the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. So what say you? I hope you enjoyed the ride today. If you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, click on the button uh, above labeled Prayer of Salvation. Otherwise, I want to thank you for spending some of your time with me. Uh, please take a second to like this post, share it with family and friends, and subscribe to this channel. And as always, peace and blessings to you and your household.